Hi there. Take a look at this for a sec. Yep, you're right. This is an empty scene that plays something resembling a game. Unity's API has a lot of features hiding in plain sight. Things that aren't in most tutorials but can genuinely make your life easier or are just fun to learn. The features I'm going to show you today, on a completely stupid example, mind you, can be both really useful and completely useless at the same time. I mean, there's a reason why they're not commonly known. Or is there? In this project, I have a simple movement controller. It simulates the movement from the famous Asteroids game. And while I did create this example on a canvas, I do it in order to simplify the example. I strongly advise against implementing full games on a canvas. But we'll talk about that sometime in the future. What if I told you that you can run code automatically when your game starts, without attaching anything to a game object? No mono behavior, no scene setup, just a static method that magically executes. Let's set up our game. First, I'll create the canvas object and attach the canvas component to it, and it should render in screen space overlay mode. Next, the camera. Same thing here. First, a game object, and then a component. I wanted to render the background in a solid color, and I'll set this color to black. Now, let's create the player. First, the game object, and then set up its transform. I want its parent to be the canvas I created earlier. I also want to spawn it in the center of the screen, so I'll set the local position to vector 3.0. And my sprite is kind of big, so I'll reduce the local scale to 50%. Now, I'll just add the movement controller component to it. It'll use the default serialized values. And lastly, I need to set up the sprite. I'll add the image component to the player and load the sprite from the resources folder. And that's it! The setup is complete, but how do we make this code run? All we need to do is add the runtime initialize and load method attribute to the static method and it'll run after the first scene is loaded. We can do it without parameters or provide the runtime initialized load type enum that tells it when we want to run this method. The default is after scene load. It will run after the first scene is loaded and all of the awake methods are called. But we have other options here. For example, before scene load. This will run when all of the objects of the scene are loaded into memory, but the awake methods haven't been called yet. Then there's after assembly is loaded. When all assemblies are loaded and preloaded assets are initialized. Note that no scene is loaded at this time. Before a splash screen, well, it what the name suggests. It will run even before the splash screen of the game. And lastly, subsystem registration. It will be executed when the Unity runtime is starting up. If we forget the silly scenario I'm showing in this video, there are a lot of uses for those callbacks. The ability to initialize important native plugins before the first scene is even loaded is priceless. You can create a setup for better error handling, DRM systems can run here, or you can, god forbid, set up your favorite singleton here. Just joking. I bet many of you have already thought about a scenario for a callback like that, and please do share it in the comments. Since my example is really simple, I'll go with the default option. Now, let's see it in the editor. Take a look at this scene. It's empty, no canvases, no cameras, nothing. Let's see what happens when I run the game. The screen becomes black, and there's a spaceship in the center, and I can also control it and move around. We can see in the hierarchy that my static method has created the canvas, the camera, and the player inside the canvas. But at the beginning of the video, I showed you a completely empty hierarchy, except for this automatically created debug update. Let's see how it's done. And it's actually easier than you might imagine. Every Unity object has a property called hide flags. Most Unity developers never touch it, but it lets you do some interesting things, like hiding game objects from the hierarchy, preventing them from being saved, or making them completely invisible to the editor. Let me break down the options. First, none. It's the default state of any game object. Next is hide in hierarchy. With this option, the object exists, 
but you won't see it in the hierarchy window. For situations when you have objects in your scene that you don't want a level designer or someone else to fiddle with. Then there's Hiding Inspector. With it, you'll see the object in the hierarchy, but won't be able to view or change its components. Similar to Hiding Hierarchy, it's useful when you don't want somebody changing how a game object is configured, but you still want to provide the ability to add or remove it from the scene. With not editable, all fields in the inspector will be grayed out and you won't be able to edit them. Similar to the previous two flags, this one can help prevent someone from messing with the object configuration. But it will actually show the fields while locking their editing. Next is Don't Save in Editor. An object marked with this flag won't be saved when you save the scene in the editor. Useful if you need an object in the scene during development but don't want to include it in the saved scene. Unlike Don't Save in Editor, Don't Save in Build will allow saving the asset in the scene, but the saved asset won't be included in builds. For example, it can be really useful if you want to include some objects in dev builds, but don't want them in a release build. Lastly, they don't unload unused assets. It prevents Unity from unloading this asset during cleanup. Useful when, well, the only scenario I can come up with is when you have a caching system that should be able to survive any cleanup. And then there are two pre-made combinations. But since this enum is a flag enum, you can use bitwise operations to create custom combinations the way you see fit. Let's replicate what I did at the beginning of the video. I'll just go ahead and add the hiding hierarchy flag to all of the game objects I create here. This will hide everything. But I also want to show you how two more flags work. So I'll create a game object for each one of those. First, hidden inspector. Just a game object with a name and the appropriate flag. Second, not editable. Same thing here, just a game object with the not editable flag. Now, let's see it in action. I'll just run the game. In terms of gameplay, nothing changed. I can still control the spaceship, but take a look at the hierarchy. All the objects I marked with height in hierarchy, the camera, the canvas, and the player, are all gone. When I press on the hidden and inspector game object, you can see that the inspector is empty. And when I press on the not editable object, the only component, which is the transform, is grayed out, and I can't add any new components to it. And that wraps up the first video in the series. I've got more of this coming, so if you want to see the next ones, hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss it. If you've got your own weird or hidden Unity features, drop them in the comment section. I might feature them in future videos. Keep on creating, and I'll see you in the next one.